All right, cool. Um, what I wanted to kind of walk through today is how I use the punch in effects and um, how to use it in kind of a, a novel and different way. Um, so I've just got this little uh, sequence going here. Let me um, expand this so you can kind of see what it is. Um, this is just one of the default uh, synths that ship with Drambo. So if I play it, that's basically the rhythm. Uh, let me go ahead and fold this so that we have a little bit more real estate. Um, now, um, I've made a claim that you can actually use the punch in effects on the track level as well as the master. Um, problem with using it on the track level is that it's relying on pressing these keys. So you're actually going to fire off a note if you have it on the track level. So um, the way I want to show you how to use it is two different ways. So the first way is to use it on the master channel. So just go to the master channel. Uh, let's pull this down so we can go find it. Punch in effects. So now it's a module. There's nothing in here right now. So let's just go add a delay. And let's make it pretty extreme. So if we go back over here, these are the notes that are playing. Now I go to the master channel, and the minute I hit C2, it should go kind of crazy delay. All right, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's add another one. Um, let's make this delay go crazy. And before it, let's add a analog filter. And before that, let's add an LFO and have that just kind of modulate like super crazy fast. Okay, so now if I hit play, um, you should just hear those notes again. Now when I hit C sharp two, this should just sound completely nuts. Okay, so you notice that it's clipping as well. Um, so what I can probably do here is add a little bit of, let's add, I forget, is there a limiter in here? Let's see. No, we don't have, let's see. Let's add that one, let's try it. So we can add the um, add the default Apple Peak limiter, um, which um, Drambo 2.2 now supports. So um, here's another cool thing. So if you just kind of tap on the C2 in the punch and effects module, you can specify how long it takes to fade in and how long it takes to fade out. So I like to have these guys come in gradually and then take a little bit longer to fade out. So let's do that. All right, let's hit play again. Now it's gonna ramp up coming in on the ping pong and then take a little bit of time to have a bit of a tail. Now I'll let go. All right, and now we should do it with the crazy LFO on the analog filter with the delay. All right, cool. So that's one really great way of using it. Uh, now, here's the other nice thing about it. Like once you've built up a punch and effects rack that you really love, like you've got all the things set up exactly with all the effects that you want, what you can do is just tap on the uh, first module, punch and effects, and go ahead and save it. And this is the sample rack. And I've got one that I've already saved. What's cool about it is that you can, um, uh, save it with native effects from Drambo as well as AUV3 effects. Now, here's where it gets kind of fun. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to route this to channel 2. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I had a previous um, effects, a uh, plugin effects, punch in effects on that uh, particular track because I was testing something. But now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and locate the punch-in effects. Now this little hamburger glyph here, those are my racks that I've pre-saved. So this is the sample rack I just saved. So let me go ahead and load that. Now what I want to do here is I'm sending this to track two. And what I want to do is I want to turn off the volume here. So just to prove that it's working, let me turn off the volume on track two. Now if I hit play, you should hear nothing. Okay. Let me go to track two, which track one is being sent to. So I'm basically just doing a bus send right now, but I'm just doing it this way um, just to kind of illustrate it in a different way and just to show how flexible Drambo is at routing.
just real quick here. Before I do that, let me turn this off, go back here, turn this on, and let's just disable that. So now we should hear it. Okay. I just wanted to show you the problem of uh, what happens. Let me uh, press and hold this to copy it, and then I'm going to add it back here. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video what happens is you're going to get those notes firing if I use the punch in effects on the same track. So just to show you that. It does work, but it sounds horrible um, because it's firing off the note. So um, let's stick with uh, sending it to track two. Turn that up to minus seven dB and turn this to zero. Okay, now since there are no instruments here, I'm just firing the notes. Maybe it's not a good idea to make feedback in wet 100%. Yeah, so um, that's essentially it. Um, two ways to do this. Um, you can either um, just put it on the master channel. And affect it at the master level. Or with just a little bit of created, uh, creative busing, um, you know, send an audio track to another audio track and uh, do it that way. And the other cool part, just as an added uh, piece of coolness, is that you can actually um, automate all this stuff as well. So let's actually do this. So now what's gonna happen is that once the playhead hits these particular steps, it's going to fire off um, those particular uh, punch in effects. So it should be clean for the first part, first quarter of playback. And then once it hits um, this uh, fifth step, it should be firing this crazy analog filter cutoff thing. And then once it gets to the eighth one, it should fire off just the ping pong delay. And I'm going to actually do a little bit of an overlap on the uh, LFO uh, cutoff effect so that it kind of trails into the um, the ping pong delay. So it's clean. And here in a second, it's going to fire off the crazy LFO. Now it's holding it for the entire duration that I specified. And now the ping pong delay should kick in. And now the LFO should start fading out. All right, well, that's it. Um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and make this project file available so you can download it from the YouTube description. And if you have any questions, as usual, just hit me up in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the viewership and I hope everyone has a great Christmas and a happy new year. All right, take care, bye.